In this video, we're going to briefly talk about inverse functions, and we're going to look at the definition of inverse functions. So inverse functions. So inverse functions intuitively are functions that undo each other. So for example, say we have f of x equals x plus 2. So f takes x and adds 2 to um, the x. So the inverse function should take x and do the opposite of add, so subtract 2. So this here, g, is the inverse of f. Let's go ahead and define uh, inverse functions. So if f and g are functions, so if they're both functions, such that, and there's two conditions, one, if you look at f of g of x, well, let's, let's think about this definition. Let's see if we can make it up. So g does something to x. f is going to be the inverse, so it has to undo that. So we should just get back x as a result. And this has to be true for all x, for all x for which this expression makes sense, right? So all the x's have to be in the domain of g, and then g of x itself has to be in the domain of f. So I'll just say for all x. Two, if you take the composition the other way, so g of f of x, so again, f does something to x. If g is the inverse, it has to undo that. So we should just get back x, and again, this is true for all x. So if both of these things are true, if f of g of x is equal to x and g of f of x is equal to x, then g is the inverse. g is the inverse of f. And that's what we say. Okay, um, a couple remarks surrounding this definition. Let's just go nuts. Let's talk about all the theory, even though it's probably more than we need. Uh, it's good to learn, right? So let's, let's, let's do it. So remarks. The first remark um, is that f is also the inverse of g. So f is also the inverse of g. So they're inverses of each other, the inverse of g, because they're interchangeable, right? f and g, they're just, you can just rename them. Um, the second remark is that uh, the notation we use for the inverse is f inverse, like that, and it's read f inverse. So it looks like an exponent, but it's not really an exponent, okay? So, so f inverse is not equal to 1 over f, okay? It's not equal to 1 over f. The third remark is that we can rewrite our definitions using this notation. So the first condition would become f of, and then instead of g, it's f inverse of x, and that's equal to x. And now you can see it's like it's like almost like they cancel, like boom, right? Because it's because you can think of it, it's almost like they do that, right? And then so you just get x. So that's not really what's happening, right? But it, the notation is intentional to give that illusion, so that you see that you just end up with x. Likewise, if we go backwards, instead of g, it's f inverse of f of x. And then this is just x. That's using this one here. So that's, that's the third remark. So sometimes you'll see that in, in math books and stuff. Um, they're just saying that f and f inverse cancel each other because they're inverse functions, and so you get x. Uh, what else? A couple other things. Uh, four. So remark four. Again, just extra knowledge. Um, a function and its inverse swap or switch or interchange domain and range. So the range of one becomes the domain of the other, and the domain of one becomes the range of the other. If you ever study trigonometry, this is extremely useful. Uh, for knowing the ranges of the inverse trig function. So this is, this is so important, like, wow, like, wow, this is huge. So good, good extra life, life knowledge. Um, what else? Oh, the graphs. So the graph of f and f inverse 
are reflections across y equals x. Let me actually show you an example of this, just a quick one so you see it because it's so cool. So say we have uh, the y-axis and the x-axis, okay? And then here we have uh, the line y equals x, looks like this. And then so if this is uh, f right here, then the inverse function is just is just a reflection uh, across across this line, so it should look. Uh, let's see. So if this is let's say this is two comma zero, right? Then this here would be uh, uh, zero comma two, right? Zero comma two. So it would look it would look something like this. So that would be the the reflection. This would be f inverse. So notice I swap the x and y coordinates. That's because a function and its inverse swap domain and range. So that leads us to another remark. This one's really important. If you have f of a, and that's equal to b, so if f takes a and sends it to b, this is equivalent to saying that the inverse function takes b and sends it back to a. Right? So again, if f takes a and sends it to b, the inverse should take b and send it back to a because they're inverse functions. As an example, let's say you have f of 2 equals 3. So f takes 2 and sends it to 3. So that means that the inverse function takes 3 and sends it back to 2. Very, very useful stuff. So um, let, let's go ahead and do a simple example uh, to verify that two functions are inverses. So verify that f of x equals, let's say, 3x plus 2, and g of x equals uh, x minus 2 over 3 are inverse functions. So to do that, we have to compute f of g of x and g of f of x, and we have to make sure that we get x in both cases. So first we'll start with f of g of x. So that's f of, and then this is your g, so you just replace it. So it'd be x minus 2 over 3. And now this says to look at f. So f is 3x plus 2. So our x is this entire piece right here. So it's 3 and then x, but that's x minus 2 over 3, plus 2, right? So, it, so it's 3x plus 2. This whole thing here is our x. The 3's cancel, so we get x minus 2 plus 2. 2's cancel, and boom, like a pro, we get x, so it checks. Then we're supposed to check the other one, so g of f of x. So this is g of, now you replace f with 3x plus 2. And uh, here's, here's our g, now we're supposed to look at g. So g of x is x minus 2 over 3. So this here, this is our x. So it's 3x plus 2. That's our x. Right, I'll put it in parentheses. You don't have to. That's our x minus 2. So here's the minus 2 there. And it's divided by 3. 2's cancel. So we get 3x over 3. So we get x. So that's it. So in fact, they're inverses of each other. The verification is complete. If you're ever doing this and you get like x for one answer, and x plus 2 for another answer, then they're not inverses, right? They, they both have to be equal to x in order uh, for the functions to be inverses. Uh, I hope that made sense. In the videos that follow, uh, I'll show you how to actually find, find the inverse. That's it.